They say that talking to yourself is a sign of insanity. But I think that's only if you answer back, right? Right. This is Talking to Myself, the art advice podcast where I use anecdotes from my life to try to make myself a better artist and possibly a better person. Other people might be able to get something out of this also, but mostly I'm just trying to avoid paying for therapy. I love music. It's vital to me. If I go a day without hearing music, it feels like the sun never rose. And this love of music has led me many, many times to trying to learn how to create music, how to play instruments, how to, you know, mix music, how to make rhythms and things on various types of platforms and physical devices. And I've failed to learn the guitar about 10 times through no faults of my many very gifted teachers. I'm just not very good at it because it requires practice and it's difficult and it's hard for me to force my brain to do that. I'm incredibly lucky that I started doing art when I was really young because if I'd tried to do it after I developed uh, my personality fully, I would never have had the will to practice and get any anywhere at all. So I've got this resistance to it. Most of the stuff I end up trying to make when I try to make music sounds like noise. And people have asked me several times, what do you mean by, what is, what's the difference between music and noise to you? To me, noise is something that happens without conscious thought, without planning, and without any, I don't know what you would call it, precision. And I, I don't mean jazz, in case you're wondering. Jazz, even freeform jazz, I think is the result of getting to a position where you can react and you create things on the fly, but that doesn't mean that you're not, it's not structurally sound. I think it becomes music when patterns form out of it or when it starts to weave itself together into something you can hear and accept. Noise is generally unsettling and hurts your ears, so to speak, I find. And that has its place too. I mean, what good would horror movies be without startling, jarring musical cues, right? That aren't really music. And what would our fight or flight response be without uh, our reaction to startling sounds that aren't music? <laughs> we might be extinct. So while noise has its place, it's not music. How does this relate back to art? Well, I'm glad you asked. Self. When I make art, a lot of times, I am on autopilot. I am flailing around a lot like freeform jazz, except like if I was really doing freeform jazz because I don't know how to play trumpet. So I end up spending a lot of time fixing mistakes, looking for patterns and shapes within the chaos that I'm creating at the time. And that works occasionally. That's not bad. It's a good way to sketch. Uh, it's a good way to play around and find ideas. But when you're down to the, to the point where you actually want to make something and it has to be a finished piece or you want it to be a finished piece, it's important to have some idea, some plan, of what it's going to be and how you're going to lay it out. You have to get past the sketching phase. You can't just sketch until it looks kind of like something and then force it through the completion by rendering everything. I'm fairly good at making details, surface details work, but a lot of times I've noticed I get done with a piece and I look at it and like, structurally it's incomplete. It, it, it's wrong. You know, this should be higher, this should be over there, those should be closer together. Those are the kind of things you need to fix before you start laying textures on top of everything and lighting. And in my rush to get to the part I really enjoy, the rendering, like everybody else, I ignored the fact that I had no plan. <laughs> I was making noise when I wanted to be making music. And I know I'm capable in this case. That's where the analogy fails. I'm actually capable of doing structured art. Luckily, going to school for art has, has trained me to know how to build something from nothing that way. And you can start with chaos sketch, that's fine, that's natural, that's probably how I'm always going to start. But there's an intermediate step that I need to make sure that I'm doing, and this is where I'm bringing up my future self here. Hey future self, I know you don't do this anymore, right? You're, you've obviously fixed all your problems and everything's fine. You have your jetpack and you're living in this little cloud city, but maybe in case it bothers you ever, think back to the distant past when you had this problem. 
make sure you do that intermediate step of refining your structure, making sure that your composition is, is reasonable, visualize what it's going to look like finished before you start finishing it. Don't be too hasty to jump into surface details and finishing results. Don't finish one area before moving on to the whole structure, the whole layout. A lot of people, especially when they're starting out with art, will get good at one particular thing, like eyes are a big one, right? People develop a technique for eyes that is good and gives good results, but they don't know how to tie it into anything else. So they end up drawing a face and it looks like a cardboard box with great eyes on it. <laughs> it's really weird. You have to make sure that you understand the, the whole and that you build the whole up to a certain level of polish before you can go to the pieces you're really good at. And for me, what I feel like I'm really good at is lighting and texture, which is like the very last stuff you could be doing. So I need to focus more on structure, make sure the thing I'm building makes sense as visually illusionary representation of um, 3D space make it seem like it's solid and grounded or whatever emotion you're trying to get across sometimes it's not that sometimes you want something to seem insubstantial wispy out of place unsettling especially if you're doing horror art if you're doing a ghost then absolutely ignore the rules of perspective and wait it'll look much scarier if it's odd but those are the kind of thoughts you need to have when you're planning and you need to do that planning in the middle after you come up with your original idea your crazy chaos music noise sketch <laughs> then you need to start pulling out elements of it that fit, correcting ones that don't, until you have something structurally that works. I assume it's like learning a piece. You start out with maybe something rhythmic, the foundation, then you can build a melody on top of it, and then you just keep progressing with that until you have what amounts to a song. I guess. <laughs> Again, I don't know. If it doesn't involve flailing randomly on uh, drums or plucking at a guitar and bass until my fingers hurt with no results, then I'm not sure what it is musically, but I can still appreciate music and I can still understand the structure of music as it relates to art. And hopefully that will help me, meaning you feed yourself, to be a better artist and not just make so much noise. Thanks everyone for listening. Hopefully that was helpful to you. I'm going to have to definitely make sure I listen to this one again because this is a serious problem I have. I'm tired of finishing a piece and looking at it going, oh, that's, that's going to need to be fixed in post in the computer. I'm going to need to liquefy that and slide that around until it, it's frustrating. I should be able to draw something and have a completed thing that's actually good. Special thanks to my patrons at Patreon. You guys get to hear and see these a week in front of everyone else. And you are the shiniest people I know. You're all wonderful. I love you all. Take care. Try to do your best to make music and not noise. And I'll catch you next time.